Today I wanted to talk about print runs from every single reserve list set so I can give you guys a better idea of where the scarcity is the most prevalent in the market. Welcome back to my channel. I am Matt Castermage and I do make videos every single day. So please subscribe and join the channel and help me grow. So there has been a lot of reserve list buyouts lately and my channel has been covering them. Well, since the second wave started in about January, February, where we had this massive boom in the reserve list market. But since then, things have settled down a little bit. But does that mean that everything is all bought up? Does that mean there's nothing on the market? Of course not. In fact, there is a lot of cards that you can still buy for a relatively cheap price. But what I wanted to talk about mostly is actually the size of the print run of the certain cards you may be looking to purchase. Now, Alpha is the original set for Magic the Gathering, and because it was more of a, a tester to see how the card game would do, they didn't really print as many cards. They just didn't have that, that availability to do such a mass printing that you would be able to get with you know cards nowadays from standard sets. So the first Alpha set had a roughly 2.6 million cards printed. That's it. Now you have to think about it. How many people are whales? How many people have massive collections with tons of binders of alpha cards? Well, people like there is people like Rudy out there who have a massive position in cards from the alpha era. So there's not a lot of these on the market right now. So when you're thinking about making a purchase, you have to remember there's only 2.6 million cards in circulation. Now, how many Black Lotuses are there? Probably not if there's only 2.6 million printed from the alpha era. Now, if you actually go to beta, they basically tripled the print run, a little more than tripled actually. It's about 7.8 million in circulation right now. So that still is pretty, pretty rare considering the sizes that actually ended up following. But what's actually interesting is Arabian Nights print run is less than beta. So Arabian Nights cards are actually very, very rare. Now I talk a lot about the Four Horsemen sets in the Market Mover videos and, and you know, you'll know you see a lot of Legends, you'll see a lot of Antiquities, the Dark, and Arabian Nights cards show up on those lists. Now Arabian Nights has some pretty big cards in that era. There were, you know, there were some cards that are worth now today over a few thousand dollars. But if you actually go further down the list, so if you look at Unlimited, for example, Unlimited's print run is 40 million. That is a massive, massive increase. And you can actually see that discrepancy when you look at prices like Unlimited Black Lotus versus Alpha Black Lotus. So these can actually give you good indicators about how much you should actually be paying for a particular reserve list card. Now Revised is massive. That is a huge print run. You're talking 600 million cards in circulation. Now, they still have the original artwork from the original ABU era. So there's a lot of nostalgia there, especially if you're a player who got into Magic around that time frame. But apart from that, you know, there's a lot of cards in there. You know, look at the revised spikes recently for reserve list cards. If there is any sort of retracement that I could see happening, it would probably be from the revised era. There's just so many cards in circulation right now. Now, if you actually look at the other expansion sets from the Four Horsemen era, you'll see that Basically, they all just keep trending and getting more and more print run, starting with the first expansion, Arabian Nights. Now, the next set that was released was Antiquities, and they basically just tripled it. And there's 15 million cards in circulation from that block. It's still a great set, still very iconic, and that's still not a lot of cards, especially considering how old you know, that, that set is. How many of these cards are near mint? How many of them have been played without sleeves? which was very common back in the day. And then you actually look at the other expansion sets, which is the next one was actually Legends, and there's 35 million in circulation. So a lot more than Antiquities. They almost tripled it. That's a little more than double, actually, of the print run for Antiquities. Still a great set, and there's still not a lot of copies in Near Mint. But then you go to the Dark, and the Dark, they basically doubled that. So you're talking 62 million in circulation. That's why if you actually look at the prices, it's still you can still find a lot of cards from the dark because that was 
uh, a pretty big print, print run. If you think about it, like 62 million, it's not that rare to find good condition cards in the dark. So if there is going to be any retracements in, in particular cards, the dark wasn't a set that had a lot of powerful cards. Uh, you could argue it was the weakest from the actual Four Horsemen era block. But that this is where things got crazy. Now remember there were so many reserveless buyouts just a few months ago and things have definitely started to slow down and teeter off. But when you actually get into the expansion sets after the Four Horsemen era, that's when things just get bonkers. That, that's when the printer just goes brrrr and just starts money printer go brrrr. That's when Wizards realizes how profitable of a game they have and they really start to let the greed sink in. Now, Fallen Empires was the next set that was printed and there is a 380 million print run. That is abs insane. Now, of course, there's still some cards in that set that are very usable, and there's reserve list cards. It's still from that era where they ended up making a lot of reserve list cards from that era. Now, after that, it pretty much goes up even higher. Now, Ice Age was 400 million, making it almost as big as Revise. But Revise from all the earlier Reserve list sets has the highest print run. Now, after Ice Age, Chronicles has 250 million. So they actually stopped the money printer, and this is actually when the outcry happened, where people said, "Hey, uh, why are you printing all these cards? I had I invested so much money buying singles. Like they wanted protection from the from Wizards of the Coast to just basically make their collections worth worth nothing. So that's when they actually." pulled back the printer for the next set, which was Homelands, which actually only has 200 million in circulation. Now, if you compare that to the other expansion set, 200 million is not that. That's actually pretty small in comparison, considering how large the game has grown at that point. Uh, the problem is Homelands, they don't have a lot of useful cards that you, you know, you'd want to play with. Of course, there's a few cards here and there, you know, but at the, at the, the grand scheme of things, that's a pretty small print run in comparison to the other expansion sets. So using this data, you can actually find greater deals through, you know, through TCG Player, through your local game store, and just through eBay with, with this type of information because when you think of Homelands, there is still a lot of reserve list cards in that set. And 200 million, it seems like a lot, but it's not as much uh, if you think about 600 million for Revised, now obviously Revised has dual lands, which is one of the main reasons why you know it's a more profitable set, especially sealed. You know, and it will grow over time because dual lands are just very useful cards and they're highly collectible. So, one of the things that I just researched right now was the lands. So the basic lands from Beta and Alpha. So you have a little over three times the amount of, of cards printed in Beta versus Alpha. Now, I just looked at Swamps for comparison. Uh, swamp A from Alpha and Beta. If you actually look at the market prices, I think Alpha basic lands are pretty undervalued right now. Beta lands have shot up so much in the last month or two because they were the cheaper alternative, but you know, when too many people buy the cheaper alternative, they're going to spike in price, and then now you're looking at uh, usually roughly two to three times more expensive for Alpha Lands versus Beta, even though it's over a three time, times the amount of printed cards from Beta. So I think Alpha right now is a very undervalued set, at least from the basic land perspective. And that was just something I wanted to talk about today. There's always ways you can use this information. I hope you guys can use this to your advantage and make a better purchase, especially when it comes to investing in Magic the Gathering cards. And with that being said, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Being a patron will help me produce more market movers and add to the funds that I will use for my random buys and also to my coffee fund because I drink a lot of coffee for these videos. And here you can see a link below in the description that will give you all the tiers and what you get in each tier. So I hope you guys click and think about joining. And with that, I'll see you next video. Think about uh, supporting the channel in that way. If not, subscribe, like, leave a comment, and I will see you again in the next video.